All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining. This is uh, welcome to session SUP 308. We'll talk about optimizing your AWS workloads using the best practice guidance. With show of hands, uh, who here is uh, happy when AWS launches a new service or a new feature? Please uh, show, show with your hands. Yeah, great, that's what I thought. We love the continuous stream of launches that AWS manages to do year after year with the new capabilities, new services, new features, uh, because they allow us to build better and innovate faster for our customers. Now, just in 2021, AWS launched 3,087 significant features and services, which is great, uh, but uh, it also takes, uh, it, it can take someone a long time to figure out how to best use an existing or a new service, a new feature that comes out. So if you're an architect, if you're an IT leader, you lead central governance teams for your, uh, for your uh, uh, businesses, for your companies, and if you're curious about optimizing your AWS workloads using best practice guidance, you're in the right place. My name is Ram Cherukuri. I'm the general manager for AWS Cloud Optimization Services. I'm super happy to be here, and particularly happy to co-present this session with Alistair McLaurin from HSBC, who leads AWS Cloud Platform Teams, and my colleague, Karthik Chikoti, uh, Principal Product Manager for AWS Trust Trusted Advisor. So he here is a quick uh, view of the, of the session today. I'll briefly tell you about AWS support, how it uh, strives to help you throughout your cloud journey. And um, I'll, I'll double click on several cloud optimization services, and then I'll, uh, Karthik will do a real deep dive into a new capability called AWS Trusted Advisor Priority, and then Alistair will talk about HSBC's journey on AWS, and uh, especially how to think about what to optimize for, and uh, their experience with cost optimization in particular. So AWS support provides a unique combination of technology, people, and programs to proactively help you optimize for performance, for cost, for, and to innovate faster. It goes well beyond troubleshooting or like in support cases and really looks around the corners for you to such that you get the best value of your investments in AWS. As you can see here on the, uh, the right two columns, Customers that specially run business and mission critical applications in AWS, you get a lot of tremendous amount of value from enterprise on-ramp and enterprise support uh, programs. Now, as we get started, like, you know, uh, what, is, what is optimization, right? Like, so optimization is a process, in very simple terms, it is a process to make something as efficient as possible under given constraints. So while what we optimize for can change over a period of time, and depending on, this, on your specific uh, situation, uh, there, are, there are four characteristics to remember, especially like you know, when you're thinking about optimizing your AWS workloads. One is that it is a continuous process, so it's not a one time you, you optimize and you're done, right? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a muscle, it's a habit that you built. Number two, it, it needs to be driven by your business objectives. And number three, it, it, it takes investment, it takes work, it takes like, you know, thoughtful work to, uh, to optimize your workloads. And number four is that it is likely to be focused on cost, performance, sustainability, security, or a combination of them. So this session will, will focus on three important questions that often come up about optimization, or especially about optimizing your AWS workloads. Number one is how to get better visibility into comprehensive and actionable guidance uh, across all your accounts, across all your regions. Number two is how to get visibility into the most important things that you should pay attention to. And number three, more importantly, is how do you build that culture of accountability within your organization such that the optimization efforts are sustainable and they, they continue going, going forward. So where do, you, where do we start? AWS Trusted Advisor Service is the home of all AWS best practice guidance. Uh, Trusted Advisor, or TA in short, provides comprehensive and actionable recommendations to help you optimize for cost, for performance, for security, for resilience, and, uh, and performance. 
A TA check is a best practice against which your workload is continuously, is programmatically evaluated. So TA checks for all accounts in your AWS organization, and in single place, it gives you the complete view of all the recommendations to, uh, to follow the best practice guidance. And because it is programmatically uh, evaluated against your resources, at any given time, you have the latest stance of how well your resources are configured or used for, uh, in, a, in an optimized way. You can access to, uh, uh, TA recommendations via the management console and TA dashboard, or through API, or through even Bridge. It uh, gives you recommendations across five different categories, as you see here, and also provides you the status for each check, whether it is green, yellow, or red. TA currently has 274 different best practice checks across 46 different AWS services. And so TA is truly the home or the place to get comprehensive and actionable recommendations. TA surfaces checks from individual AWS services such as Amazon EC2 or AWS Lambda, as well as all the specialized recommendation hubs like Security Hub or Resilience Hub or even Compute Optimizer. That way you do not have to worry about multiple, like you know, tens of different uh, integrations, but once you uh, start using uh, TA or in, you're integrated with the TA API, it gives you that comprehensive view across all service level checks, but also the specialized recommendation hubs. Now, applying best practice guidance across tens and thousands of your accounts can be overwhelming. So that is why we are excited to offer new capability and tooling to help you focus on the most critical recommendations. Like, uh, now I'd like to invite Karthik Chikoti on the stage to tell you about AWS Trust Advisor Priority, a new capability that we launched earlier this year uh, for uh, generally available for all enterprise support customers. Thank you, Ram. Now, this includes their technical account managers, their solutions architects, their account managers, and customer solutions managers. Now, this group of people from AWS work very closely with you to understand your needs, your motivations, your goals, your strategic objectives, to help you curate an experience on AWS. Now, while they're working with you, they're also working with hundreds and thousands of other customers and applying their learnings across, by working across all of their customers to help you optimize your deployments in AWS. They're helping you reduce costs to reduce risks and quite honestly, just you know, uh, help you innovate faster on AWS. Now, we also heard from customers that enterprises have tens and hundreds of accounts, thousands of resources across all of them, where you have to review the recommendations, identify the impact, prioritize, and then take action. Now, these customers have been working with their account teams through all of these stages, where they receive custom guidance based on what's important for them. Now, whether it's exiting a data center by the end of the year, launching a new product, et cetera. Now, while um, all of uh, the, uh, these interactions with the AWS account teams in the past have been through ad hoc channels. Now, context about what's important for you and your goals and strategic objectives were also shared via offline channels. And their custom guidance to help you meet these goals was shared with you via email, during business review things, if you have them on a monthly or quarterly cadence, and via cadence calls, which are also on a cadence. Wouldn't it be awesome to have all of this presented to you on a dashboard where you can review, where you can review it at your own convenience? AWS Trusted Advisor Priority, TA Priority, is a new feature that digitizes this engagement experience that you have with your AWS account teams to receive custom guidance on a dashboard. TA Priority is a new feature on the Trusted Advisor console where you can receive both programmatic checks as well as custom uh, curated guidance from your uh, AWS account teams on a, on a dashboard. It's available uh, for, and it's intended for the IT leaders, the business unit leads, the Cloud Center of Excellence teams, and central governance teams in your organizations, where you can review these recommendations, acknowledge them, triage them, and help and mitigate uh, critical risks in your deployments. 
Uh, TA priority is uh, available at a multi-account view or an AWS organization view, meaning all recommendations in TA priority are actually aggregated across multiple accounts that roll up to your AWS organization. Um, it is available today in the management account tied to your AWS organization and through the management account uh, also in delegated administrator accounts, which is a concept we'll talk about in a couple slides. And today it's available to customers on an enterprise support subscription and you can control who has access to it through IAM. So where do recommendations come from on TA Priority? They come from one of two sources. The first is AWS Trusted Advisor. So the Trusted Advisor dashboard that Ron talked about earlier with 270 plus best practice recommendations across 40 plus services. Uh, so this includes recommendations from individual AWS services such as the Lambdas, the EC2s, the EBSs, as well as domain specialized recommendation services such as Computer Optimizer, Think Security Hub, Think Config Rules, and even AWS Well Architected. Um, and then the, the second source is your AWS account team. Now, oftentimes your AWS account team reviews your usage of different services across your different accounts, your spend across different accounts, different workloads, and comes up with optimization opportunities. So, you know, this could be a recommendation to uh, sign up for a savings plan or uh, sign up for reserved instances or when they see an opportunity to get you uh, engaged with a proactive services engagement on an enterprise support plan or enterprise on-ramp plan, they can get you uh, a cost optimization workshop, which is a proactive services engagement. If, uh, if they know of uh, an upcoming product launch that you're working on or a, or a migration to the cloud, uh, they can sign you up for uh, an infrastructure event management or an IEM to help you with a structured way to plan your migration to the cloud. Now, all of these recommendations are going to be surfaced to you on, uh, on TA priority. In addition to that, um, you know, when you encounter an issue, you reach out to us via a support case. Your AWS account team analyzes your support case activity across a period of time, across all of your accounts, and comes up with recommendations. So for instance, if you know, uh, your team has filed a lot of support cases related to Lambda, and we in the past recommended you to go serverless, so there's an opportunity for them to come in and say, we'd recommend you to sign up for, you know, we'd, we'd like to get the, uh, you know, a deep dive with the Lambda team scheduled, right? So all of these custom recommendations are gonna be surfaced to you on priority. So I talk a lot about this being uh, prioritized and personalized to you. So how do we make this context aware? We do this by you know, leveraging our understanding of your production accounts, and we can get your help with that. You know, we, you know, by way of tagging, by way of leveraging resource group, by way of alerting us uh, and, and, and signing up for your critical applications on you know, tools like App Registry, where we understand where your critical workloads are. Working with you and understanding what's important for you. Are you looking to reduce costs? Are you looking to uh, migrate a workload to the cloud? And last but not the least, it's the outcomes that you're looking to uh, achieve. It's the strategic things that your business is looking to achieve. Are you looking to expand to a new geography? Are you looking to reduce costs in a certain workload? So this is a context that we, uh, that we leverage to customize recommendations that are surfaced to you in TA Priority. So what exactly do we share there? What, the first is prioritize programmatic checks. So for context, when we started uh, the journey to make Trusted Advisor the home of best practices uh, last year, we started off with 115 best practice recommendations across five categories. Today, we're at 270 plus, and this is an ongoing journey to continue to build that roster of best practice recommendations as AWS launches new services. We've launched services in the past year, we've launched services early this year, and we've launched certain new services this year. So we'll continue to build up on that best practice uh, best practice roster in the Trusted Advisor dashboard that Ram talked about. So think about Trusted Advisor building on the roster of best practice recommendations, multiply that by the number of resources, multiply that by the number of accounts. So that's how many you're gonna be surfaced um, across the board. TA priority is gonna apply prioritization based on context and surface the most critical recommendations to you on priority. 
We also uh, surface uh, manually identified opportunities by error counting. If we notice that you haven't done a well-architected review uh, for a certain period of time in a critical workload, we let you know that there's an opportunity to do a, a well-architected review, either self-serve through the tool or an expert-led well-architected review. If you haven't rotated your access keys in the past 90 days, we'll also let you know that. We, in addition to best practice recommendations, we also alert you of critical risks in your deployments. So on the flip side, if you've done a well-architected review, the output of a well-architected review is a high, medium, or low risk. So we, if you've done a well-architected review recently, there's a lingering high-risk indicator or an HRI from that well-architected review, we'll surface it and let you know that that needs attention. We also run campaigns uh, internally uh, to identify single points of failure, such as a single availability zone deployment. Um, so if you have a production application that's running you know, mission-critical processes for you, or if that drives a significant amount of revenue for you, or if you, if you even have regu regulated availability requirements, we want to make sure that you don't have a business impacting event because you're running it on a single availability zone. Um, and from time to time, we, you know, for enterprise support and enterprise on-ramp customers, we let you know of opportunities that you can take advantage of with proactive services engagements. They, uh, it's a huge catalog of uh, uh, engagements ranging from you know, redshift deep dives to cost optimization workshops to infrastructure event managements to, um, uh, to uh, cloud operations reviews and more. So the goal is to detect, to raise awareness, and to provide prescriptive guidance. The benefits of TA priority are fourfold. The first is everything that you see here is prioritized and critical for, uh, for, for your workloads. And it's not a read-only console, so you have the ability to actually let us know through a closed-loop feedback tracking mechanism, and I'll show you the experience in the console in a couple of slides uh, on, on what's important for you or not. So you have the ability to accept or reject a recommendation and let us know if it's of importance for you. And that's how we continue to build a context on what's important for you. Um, the, the third thing is it's, it's at a multi-account level or, or an AWS organization view. So if you're already using the construct of AWS organizations to kind of group accounts together to create business units, then TA priority represents a risk posture across uh, your business unit. And the last but not the least is, you know, it, it, it's, it's got a historical activity, so you can review all actions taken by your team at any point in time. So we want to show you the experience on the console. So TA priority is available in uh, the management account and delegated administrator accounts. So from the console homepage, management accounts land on TA priority by default. If you don't have access to it, you'll be presented with this message alerting you to request access to your account team to get you started. On the console landing page on the actions needed panel on the top left, you'll be presented with uh, you know, a couple stats that tells you the recommendations that have been surfaced to you that you're yet to take an action on and the number of recommendations that you're actively working on. So, Recommendations move from pending response to in progress to result as you kind of work through them. The overview panel on the right gives you some additional insights, such as recommendations that have you've rejected in the past 90 days or resolved in the past 90 days, and the average time that it's actually taken your team to resolve uh, a recommendation. Content below is actually split into two tabs, active and closed. Uh, the active tab contains recommendations that your team is currently actively working on, and closed tab contains recommendations that you have been either rejected or resolved. Um, and all the account team prioritized recommendations are presented in a series of searchable and sortable columns. So the easy way to leverage this dashboard is to kind of review and filter by age to see how many critical risks that have been sitting there for a period of time, or if you're looking, uh, look, looking for security-related risks that you want to uh, address early on uh, to improve the security posture, or fault-tolerance-related recommendations to improve the resiliency of, of your applications. Uh, the columns are searchable and sortable. So every new recommendation that surfaced to you 
uh, is, uh, you know, starts off at the pending response, is when you click on the recommendation to view the details of it. So a quick recap of a recommendation. So the construct mimics a, a trusted advisor check, if you're familiar with it. So the overview panel provides some metadata about the recommendation. The details has a description and the alert criteria, uh, as well as the recommended action. So the key difference is in the affected accounts as well as the affected resources. So keep in mind, TA priority is at a multi-account view. So if this recommendation is applicable across multiple accounts in your AWS organization, you'll see them all listed there. And then the resource table is also reflective of the key resources your account team has prioritized across the multiple accounts. So it's from here that you're able to either accept or reject a recommendation. So when you accept or reject, you'll be presented with a pop-up model uh, you know, uh, with, with asking you to enter some information. And this is how we continue to learn more about uh, you and, how, and, what's, and, and continue to build context on what's important for you. Now, keep in mind, everything that you do here is presented to um, your account team on an internal experience, where they're able to view changing in statuses across uh, different recommendations. Uh, every action that you take here, your account team is able to monitor, uh, monitor them. Now, why, if you have an offline conversation with your account team and you say that you want to act on it, they have the ability to accept or reject on your behalf, and you'll see that on the dashboard. And, and this accept and reject completes the closed loop feedback mechanism on the console. Um, and all closed recommendations are actually available to be viewed uh, in the closed tab. I want to you know, uh, give you a flavor of the kinds of recommendations that you'll be able to see on uh, priority surface by your account team. So this one is about improving resiliency. So in this example, your account team has identified Amazon RDS instances that have been deployed in a single AZ. And uh, they've alerted you of instances across your critical workloads that require attention. Now, deploying them on a multi-AZ multi improves the resiliency posture. Uh, so in, in the instance of you know, the failure of the DB instance or you know, the failure of the entire uh, availability zone, you don't have a business impacting event. So the, if you click on the link, it gives you more details of you know, how, to, how to deploy uh, RDS instances, uh, you know, either using a multi-RDS, uh, uh, you know, multi-AZ, uh, instance which deploys at least one RDS instance and another uh, availability zone or uh, a multi-AZ cluster which deploys at least two RDS instances, one for failover and one for reads. The second one uh, is about improving security. Security is key to everything that we do here at Amazon and multi-factor authentication adds an extra layer of security uh, by adding a six-digit numeric code that you could you know, e either do using a, a, a software MFA uh, device, which is a, like an app on your phone, or a hardware MFA token. Uh, and uh, the account team has prioritized uh, you know, le leveraging MFA on a root account for each IAM user in that account. Here, your account team has identified an opportunity for you to reduce costs based on you know, the usage of services and uh, the spend in a certain workload. And they're recommending a proactive services engagement. Um, and this is a, an expert-led engagement that uh, typically is like a half a day or a full day thing that you do with your uh, account team. They sit down with you. They understand the use cases uh, for, for spend in that account. They, they review. Uh, your spend for a certain period of time, and at the end of the workshop, they, you know, you can, they'll come up with tangible things that, you know, where when you apply them, you can redeem cost savings immediately, and they also help you with strategies for, you know, ongoing cost optimization. So I talked about, I talked about TA priority being available in the management account. We, we understand that it's limiting because management accounts are uh, you know, locked down for a limited number of users. Through Delegated Administrator, which is a construct that's available through AWS organizations, you can delegate admin privileges to up to five member accounts that roll up to your AWS organization. So in the Trusted Advisor Console, on the left navigation pane in your organization, when you register the new, uh, a, a new account, 
you're, you're asked to enter a 12-digit account number. We run a validation to ensure that that account actually rolls up to your AWS organization, and uh, we, you'll be presented with a, you know, a banner message saying that it's been successful. Now, through managed policies and through IAM in that account that you just registered, you can control who has access to it, whether it's a read-only access, whether it's a read-write access, uh, a full access, rather, to uh, AWS uh, uh, Trusted Advisor Priority in that account. And you could do this up to five, uh, five member accounts in your organization through the management account. You can opt in to receive email notifications, uh, daily or weekly email digests, as you receive new recommendations and critical risks from your, uh, from your account team, or if anyone across your organization actually makes progress on any one of them, you can receive daily and, email weekly, uh, daily and weekly email digests. Uh, you could do this from every account that has access to TA priority, so the management account and the five member accounts. So IAM users across uh, the alternate contacts, as we call it, in the account, so the billing operations and security contacts can, uh, can be set up to receive email notifications. To summarize, the Trusted Advisor dashboard, which is the 270 plus best practice recommendations, is available in every single account, and it's an available at an account level. Uh, from your account, you can, uh, from your management account, uh, from TA dashboard, you can set up to receive uh, email, email reports uh, across multi-account uh, multi view or an AWS organization view. If you are an enterprise support customer, Take advantage of Trusted Advisor Priority, which is prioritized and context-aware recommendations fed to you by your AWS account team. And you know, last but not the least, you know, everything that is surfaced to you is, is to make sure that you optimize your deployments on AWS and uh, you know, mitigate critical risks. So take advantage of that prescriptive guidance from your account team. Um, for context, we've launched TA Priority in uh, uh, is generally available today. So we've launched it in GA August of uh, 2022. And since then, over 60% of enterprise support customers are actively using TA Priority. We love receiving feedback from customers. Here's a success story from uh, AFI Labs who, uh, who build software and platforms for large-scale uh, gaming competitions. And, and here's a feedback from that customer. And, uh, and now I'd love to welcome Ram back on stage, and he's going to talk to you about other frameworks and tools to help you optimize your workloads on the cloud. Thank you, Karthik. So as you can see, like, we are very excited about Trusted Advisor and the new capabilities with Trusted Advisor uh, Priority to help you uh, getting the complete view of the recommendations and also in a personalized way, along with closed feedback loops. Now, in addition to Trusted Advisor, there are a few other uh, services that I'd like to double click on. The first being Well Architected Framework. Uh, well Architected Framework describes the key concepts, the design principles, and architectural best practices for designing and uh, deploying and operating your workloads on AWS. There are six pillars for the framework, and with a set, as you answer a set of foundational questions, it, it helps you to understand, uh, evaluate your application architecture against the best practices, and then help you to identify the, all the uh, areas to improve. It provides you the guidance on how to improve your architecture to meet the best practice guidance. So well architecture reviews, they can, uh, you can involve multiple stakeholders, multiple team members from your teams. Uh, they can be self-conducted, or they can be assisted by your technical account managers, solution architects, or partners within the API network. And uh, we recommend them to be performed on a regular cadence, so, such that, like, and primarily because it is, it is part of a continuous improvement mechanism, uh, especially for your critical workloads. So the, the Bell Architecture reviews help you to identify the opportunities. They help you to quantify the improvements. Uh, quantify the opportunities, and then they also help you to identify the solutions on like, what are the steps you need to take to improve your architectures. And then as you prioritize and then improve, it's a continuous cycle. And this is how, especially for your critical workloads, there's tremendous amount of value in doing this on a regular cadence. And uh, Well Architected is integrated into Trusted Advisor Priority, 
So as you go through the well architecture review and identify the uh, high risk items or high risk issues or like the, the most valuable opportunities to improve, they are fed automatically into your trusted advisor priorities. AWS Health is another critical service to integrate with and to, uh, especially to optimize your workloads for resiliency to handle like, you know, any operational events that happen with AWS. All AWS services, they publish something called events to AWS Health Service, and uh, these are uh, operational events caused by like, you know, fiber cuts or power, power outages or bad deployments. And if there is some, uh, an operational event on AWS front, AWS Health provides you that visibility, provides you that transparency, such that you can, you can optimize your workloads, for, uh, especially for resiliency in handling these operational events. There, you can access uh, health notifications th through three different ways. Uh, one is the a global console called AWS Health Dashboard. Number two is uh, through EventBridge. And number three is through a set of API uh, that you can integrate with. So in addition to the well architected framework and AWS Health, you can also engage uh, with an excellent, vibrant community of other cloud enthusiasts on Repost. Repost, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's an online community for knowledge sharing and um, community-driven site. To, uh, it's, it's a replacement for AWS forums from last year, uh, from previous years, but uh, Repost is, is evolving into this uh, really active online community where cloud enthusiasts, customers, AWS employees are actively uh, working on the community to share guidance on best practices and in not only in troubleshooting, but also like you know, how to best use AWS. Repost lets you uh, quickly find the answers uh, because of uh, like you, you don't even need to log into the site to browse through all the que uh, questions and answers on the site. The content is uh, well organized following the AWS uh, blank, uh, taxonomy. So it's easy to find the services or like, you know, the features that are of interest to you. Use this machine learning to identify like, you know, what topics, what um, uh, services or um, discussions are most uh, relevant to you. And then uh, it also uh, uh, allows you to follow specific topics or experts on the community. So all the relevant information is surfaced in a, in a very easy to uh, consume fashion. It gets you the guidance that you can trust uh, especially because um, any question posted on repost is automatically routed to the uh, experts on the, on the, in the online community, and the answers are, are validated, are, are reviewed for accuracy, and they are tagged accordingly, saying this is community expert reviewed or AWS employee reviewed. So just by consuming the, the uh, participating in this online community, you can get best practice guidance very quickly from sources that you can trust. We're excited about a new feature called Articles on Repost. It's a, it's a, it allows you to uh, consume long form content where the community experts uh, or the cloud enthusiasts like, and they can publish very detailed guidance for not only for best practices, but also for how to and troubleshooting guides. So highly encouraged like, to check out the, the new uh, articles feature on Repost. Now, with all of these tools, like, you know, like Trusted Advisor, Well Architected, uh, Health, and Repost, you may still want to discuss best practice guidance with AWS support. And uh, I would like to tell you about a new communication channel that we launched uh, just a few months ago, which is a support app within Slack. So your team members can now work alongside AWS support, uh, support engineers, and uh, to, to quickly identify the root causes, to troubleshoot issues, but also to get the best practice guidance and, and to, to identify like, you know, the important areas to focus on and to make, uh, make those improvements. And uh, then the neat part here is like your team uh, members can directly engage with AWS support from your own Slack workspaces. So you do not need to leave your Slack workspaces to go to support center console and log in one-on-one, -on -one, but your entire team can collaboratively work with AWS support engineers at the same time.
So in addition to the technology that we have covered so far, such as Trusted Advisor, Will Architecture Frameworks, AWS Health, Repost, Slack App, and Support, uh, consider signing up for the uh, premium support plans that we reviewed at the very beginning with Enterprise On-Ramp or Enterprise Support, because you get a tremendous amount of access to the, the people and the program as well, in addition to the technology, in addition to the services that we talked about. Now I'd like to invite Alistair onto the stage to, um, and share their experience using AWS Cloud Optimization Services and advice for optimizing your workloads. Thank you very much. Hello, Las Vegas. So, um, I'd, my name's Alistair McLaren. I head up the AWS platform team at HSBC. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we optimize our workloads particularly with a cost lens perspective. So a little introduction to HSBC. We are a global financial services firm. We operate in over 64 countries and territories and have over 40 million customers. Uh, we have hundreds of applications on the public cloud now, including over 300 production applications on AWS. So yes, here are some stats, over 1,000 AWS accounts, over 400 production applications today. We use over 80 AWS services and seven AWS regions with more in the pipeline. So fairly big environments. And as banks, we're always thinking about managing risk. So this risk can take multiple forms, it could be financial stress, it could be natural disaster, it could be technology failure, it could be human actions. And we talk a lot about insider risk and threats from external attack as well. And so we've created an operating model around our cloud centers of excellence. And basically within the AWS team, we follow this model. So the most important thing is that applications use native AWS services. So we don't put a large abstraction layer in front of it. Our applications use Terraform, use other deployment tools to deploy directly to AWS. And around that, we build detailed monitoring. We build a continuous compliance framework. We have a culture of rapid feedback. And we also build out a user group culture. And we'll talk a little bit more around that later. So how do we think about cost optimization? Well, the way I've chosen to present it today is to, to layer it much like an AWS organization tree. So at the top of the tree, you have your master billing account. And then we have different branches of the tree. And then down at the bottom, we have the individual application deployment accounts. And this sort of maps to how we run the cloud team at HSBC. We have a central team and they work on the centralized programs across all our public cloud providers. So they will work on things like enterprise discount programs. For uh, AWS, they work on reserved instances and savings plans, and they generate central training newsletters and so on. Within my team, the platform team, we work on some specific AWS tooling. So for example, and we'll talk a little bit more about this, but we run an instant scheduler that helps control costs by bringing environments up and shutting them down at, at quieter times. We also work with our AWS um, professional services and TAM colleagues to do the well-architected reviews that were discussed earlier. And we provide landing zone optimization and tooling optimization across the environment. And then at the application teams, they optimize through continuous refactoring of their applications, taking advantage of new services, new operating system, and new, process choice, new processor choices. So how do the teams get the information they need to make their decisions? So for the central team, they work with AWS Proactive Services. They work very closely with AWS Trusted Advisor. We use specialized FinOps tooling, so we use CloudAbility in our case. We use the AWS Billing Console extensively, and we work extremely closely with all of our AWS account team, always with a cost and cost management lens. For the platform team, we take all that information, but we're also reading AWS blogs, we're reading service announcements, 
we actually do testing and development with a cost lens. So we might test out new processor choices. We might run model architectures on different environments to see if we can find further ways of reducing cost. And we work on a very, very day-to-day -day basis with our solution architects and our technical account managers. And then for the application teams, again, they work with AWS enterprise support to run things like cost optimization work, workloads. We try to give them as near as possible to real-time cost analytics. And they're also consuming information that we push out to them, like the blogs and the monthly forum. So we encourage all our application teams to work very closely and monitor trusted advisor. And then the platform team produces security and fault tolerance checks. So some of the tooling we consume from AWS, some of the tooling we build ourselves. And then we work with our AWS TAMs as part of enterprise support to share risk and best practice recommendations across all of our community. We're also particularly fond of personal health dashboards. So personal health dashboards communicates not only AWS service disruptions, but the risks associated with technical debt. And at HSBC, for the incident management, we actually directly link personal health dashboard to incident management. So if there is ever any disruption to any service that could impact our applications, we already have a well-run, well-practiced incident response mechanism that AWS information is feeding into. So as part of the Go Live framework for any application going live at HSBC, we've taken the AWS well-architected framework. But what we've done is we've adopted the weighting of the different pillars of the framework with the business criticality of the application in question. We're going to talk a little bit more about how we do that. So, for example, for a tier zero application, tier zero for us means this application is absolutely critical. And so this might be customer internet banking. One of the things that you have when you're running a bank is people give you money, but it is always their money. They absolutely expect to be able to get it out, to use it to pay for things, so your cash machine networks, your credit card services, they are absolutely business critical. And just to be clear, we already run a number of tier zero mission critical services on AWS today. And to my mind, this is a lot like a service like Tower Bridge. So this is Tower Bridge in London. It's a classic example of really well implemented architecture. It supports multiple levels of traffic. So you can see it supports river traffic, road traffic, and pedestrian traffic. It supports high availability. So when pedestrians can't cross because the bridge is up, there is a redundant route across the top of it. Ad admittedly, it introduces some latency. It has observability. There are actually windows at the top of the bridge where you can look down and view the traffic below. And so it is a beautiful and well-known piece of architecture. And so the architectures you develop for your tier zero applications are a lot like this. You would want to use every AWS service. You would want to put it in multiple availability zones. You'd want to make sure that every single service you use is really, really, really highly resilient. You might go multi-region you will have a lot of time re-reviewing it and making the most beautiful architecture you could. And really what you want to do is come to reinvent and do a presentation called My Brilliant Nine Nines Available Application. But in truth, not all the applications we build are tier zero. And in fact, across most enterprises, only perhaps seven to 10% of your applications are really truly mission critical. So the example I've got here is a bridge called Pack Horse Bridge in Stokesley in North Yorkshire. And this is a really, really common example of a stone built bridge across a small river. It fulfills the purposes it was built for. It only has 99.5% availability, availability because when it's snowy and icy, you can't really cross it safely. 
An architect probably wasn't involved in it at all. It was built by a stonemason and a builder. And hundreds of these built bridges were built, and they've survived for hundreds of years. So for an awful lot of our applications, they can live with a 99.9 .9 or a 99.5% availability target. So it's OK to put them in a single availability zone. It's OK to migrate them to a single server and a single build pipeline. Put them in an EC2 instance, put the EC2 instance in an auto-scaling group of one, and you will find hundreds and hundreds of these small, useful, but not mission-critical apps across the enterprise. And you might be thinking, well, I could still decompose it. I could take that holiday booking app. I could turn it into a whole range of serverless functions. I could put Dynamo at the back end. I could you know, do all sorts of clever things. So I'm going to have another show of hands. How many people in this room have a whole pool of developers sat around doing nothing? Hands up, please, if you've got lots and lots of developers. They've gone through all their AWS certification, and they now really have nothing to do. Right, for those of you watching online, there are 8,000 people in the audience here, and none of them have raised their hands. So what we're really saying here is horses for courses. For your mission-critical applications, for your applications that surprise and delight your customers every day, they're the ones you want your key developers on. For your contractor time booking systems, it's perfectly OK to build to three nights availability. So we work a lot with AWS to identify our cost optimization opportunities. And I'm going to quickly go through some now, specifically savings plans and reserved instances, our favorite processor choices, and CPU types. So in terms of reserved instances, I mean, we use between 7,000 and 21,000 EC2 instances on a typical day. And so the ones that run 24 by 7, we take out reserved instances on them. And we might take one year RIs, we might take three year RIs, but that gives us 35% savings across our EC2 fleet. Same for Elasticast, same for Redshift, same for RDS. Where we've got things running in a long-term stable state, we save money with reserved instances. Where we don't, where they're short-lived in development, maybe we use spot instances for EC2, maybe we just pay the on-demand pricing. But there's one more thing you can do with your compute, and this is savings plans. And I was asked to highlight this because we think savings plans are excellent. Um, so, for savings plans, you model the amount of compute you use, and you'd want to model the peak amount of compute, and you purchase that. But unlike reserved instances, you, you purchase across all your compute type. So pre-purchase it, and then every time you fire up your compute, up to that amount of spend, you're getting a dramatically reduced rate. And they work perfectly with reserved instances as well. So these are genuine percentage figures from the HSBC environment from July and August this year for our savings plans coverage. And you'll notice there's peaks, and I'm going to come on to why those peaks exist, but we are running at between 88 and nearly 100% savings plans coverage now. And it took us a year to get really comfortable with this. It took us a year to get really good at modeling it. But it's taken tens of thousands of dollars out of our monthly bill. So another platform optimization that we really love is running lambdas on Graviton. So as part of our core compliance framework, we run thousands and thousands of serverless functions, and they fire millions of times a day. Last year, we ran a project to take all those Lambda functions, which are all written in Python, we converted them all to the latest version of Python, and we converted them all across the Graviton. That took 20% off our, off our com serverless compute bill for the core platform. But as part of that exercise, we then noticed that out of these 100 functions, three were outliers. They were accounting for nearly 50% of the spend. 
So using lambda power tuning, we profiled the top 10 consuming lambdas. We put our best, most skilled engineers on them. We rewrote them completely, and that took another 20% out of the cost of our core functions. So again, we're huge, huge fans of Graviton. And then earlier I mentioned Instant Scheduler. So we use AWS Instant Scheduler, and then in more recent times we've moved to Cloud Custodian to basically shut down unused resources at weekends. And this is only in development. We, should, we don't shut down production at weekends. But in development, we basically used to have an opt-in system. We now have an opt-out service. So unless you specifically tell us that your development environment it does not want to be turned off over a weekend, we go in and we shut it down. And now that we're using Cloud Custodian, we actually have more plugins than just the EC2 fleet. So we're looking at actually tearing down network resources. We're looking at compressing some storage. We're looking at a whole range of ways to save money across test and dev. So in terms of our culture, we've learned a lot from Amazon.com. And we often think about, you know, one of the great things about working with AWS is they bring in examples from other industries. They bring in their best practice guidelines. And this is a classic flywheel that was drawn on the back of a napkin as Amazon was set up. So how does Amazon serve its customers? Well, it serves them through better selection, better customer experience, better traffic. That drives more traffic, more sellers, more selection, better customer experience. But the thing that, the flywheel that drives this is the lower cost structure, drives lower prices, drives improved customer experience. And so in terms of our cost, decentralized cost management culture, so we as a platform team aim to provide tailored recommendations to each of our customers, each of the applications running on us about billing data, new services, best practice in FinOps, we feed that as fast as possible, and that enables the DevOps team to produce swift responses in their application architectures. And then as they improve their architectures, we aim using a combination of the AWS tools and Cloudability to have these fast feedback loops. So they can test a new architecture, they can test a new service, they can test a new processor choice, and that goes back to them. They make the improvements costs are driven down across the service. And this is one, this is my final slide, this is one great example brought to us by a customer. One of our own teams noticed this, tested it. And so if you're using x86 or AMD64, as they should probably be called, instance types, you can often make a straightforward 8 to 12% cost save by swapping from an Intel chip to AMD's Epic. Not in every region, not for every workload, but in most cases, it's worth trying out. But what's really noticeable, and we noticed this when we launched our region in India, is that at the moment, AMD-backed instances in the India region are 40% cheaper than the AMD backed instances in US East 1. So they are 50% cheaper than the Intel instances for exactly the same amount of compute. Now, one of, our, one of our application teams noticed this. They brought this to us. And it might be that for various data sovereignty requirements or whatever, you can't move your production instance to India on AMD chips but you might have a development environment that could live anywhere in the world. So if you need certain, and you can run x86 architecture-based based services, trying them out on India, doing your development there, and then taking the build pipelines and building production elsewhere might take a significant amount out of your development costs. And as I say, the key point I'm making here is not just an advert for AMD or an advert for India, it's about the culture where people discover these things. We run user forums, we run newsletters. If we spot someone with a huge x86-based development environment, we say, hey, did you know you might be able to save some money by moving that development environment to AMD on India, in India? So 
that's pretty much it from my case study. Um, I will hand over and we will do, did you want me to go through these or were you going to? Okay, so my key points, create an optimization culture, educate your teams on managing the costs within the cloud and in cost management do enable animality detection because we've talked about reducing costs, mistakes happen, teams can run up bills accidentally. Create your communication channels. Find the best way for people to discover cost-saving opportunities and communicate them with the rest of your teams. Constantly refactor with cost in mind. So always think about availability as a pillar where it matters, but cost matters to all, all of us and always think about that. And in cloud, focus on the 0.01% improvements. You know, as we keep scaling up, as we keep scaling out, scale makes the small changes matter. And I think particularly in enterprise, this is sometimes a really hard message to get across. But as we've learned from our Lambda example and so on, all these little incremental improvements make a big difference at the month end bill. And finally, we love the well-architected pillars. We love everything about working with our technical account management team. But the, the architected pillars change the emphasis depending on the type of application. And again, this is something enterprises sometimes struggle with. Not everything is tier zero mission critical. And sometimes cost, if you can make a dramatic cost save, it's a worthwhile trade-off against your availability pillar. And that concludes the HSBC case study. Thank you. Thank you, Alistair. So I'll definitely be thinking about observability next time in, I'm in London and uh, at the Tower Bridge. Thank you, Alistair. So um, if you remember, like you know, I mentioned, back in, uh, in all of 2021, AWS launched three, more than 3,000 significant features and launches. I'm not particularly good at gambling and betting, which is not a great thing when you're in Vegas, but I can safely bet that that number is going to be even higher this year, right? So I hope you found a few key things uh, from this session. One is like uh, to uh, using the portfolio of cloud optimization services through Trusted Advisor, through uh, Health, Well Architected Framework, Repost, and the Slack app and support that you now have a uh, comprehensive view into all the best practice guidance. And then especially using Trusted Advisor Priority, you have this a view into the curator recommendations from your account teams, so you know where to prioritize, where to focus on. And then uh, from Alistair's uh, uh, excellent talk, I uh, hope you picked up some ideas around how to build that culture to such that your optimization journey is sustained over a period of time. So that concludes the session. Uh, Alistair, Karthik, myself will be around to take any questions, any suggestions. Uh, but th thank you for your time. Thank you for the interest.